Al hacer conciencia sobre el funcionamiento del subconsciente, se pueden cambiar patrones de conducta, estados de ánimo e incluso curar enfermedades. Nuestros patrones y programaciones mentales pueden construir o destruir nuestra vida. is the placebo effect and oh. the nocebo effect. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because a lot of people understand what the placebo effect is. And what is it? Well, uh, it's interesting because uh, medical science has revealed that from one third to two thirds, which is significant, of all healing, whether it's drug related or surgery or whatever healing process, the healing didn't come about from the process. The healing came about because the person believed the process was going to heal them. So if I give you this brand new drug and it's purple colored because that makes it really special, you know, uh, and it's funny because there is a drug, a purple drug, and they said, it's purple. And everybody's like, oh, wow, that's got to be special. But people believe that the drug holds this effect. And you give a person this drug and all of a sudden they heal themselves and they say, yeah, the drug did it. And then you tell them later, but it was just a sugar pill. Uh, that, that healing didn't come from the drug. It came from the belief in the drug. So. The belief in healing so it comes is back what to the heals mind you. again, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, it's again the power of belief. In this case, it's a very positive belief that this procedure, drug, or whatever is going to heal me. But what people haven't talked about because everyone knows about the placebo effect is that the placebo effect on a, is based on a positive thinking. What is the consequence of negative thinking? Ah, well, science has a term for it, but it hasn't really come out in the public. It's called the nocebo effect. And the nocebo effect has been revealed by science that a negative thought can not only make you ill, but a negative thought could also kill you. You can be scared to death in a, in a real sense, okay? Uh, and, and why is that important? Because it turns out it's not just the positive thought of placebo that's influential. The negative thought works the same way with the same power, but in the opposite direction. So basically, it's not placebo, nocebo. It comes down simply this, it's the power of thought. And a positive thought will move you in a healing direction, and a negative thought will move you into an illness direction. Uh, but before I get off that topic, I don't want people to go out there in the audience and go, oh, 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 one of those positive thinking kind of guys. And it's like, it's more than just positive thinking. It's a, a commitment and an intention of positive thinking. It also really needs the support of your subconscious belief. Because if your subconscious belief is going, oh, that new age weirdo stuff, if that's what your subconscious is programmed to believe, and yet your conscious mind is the one that says, I will think positive thoughts, and I go back to the data. Only 5% of your life is coming from the conscious mind. So if you're only entertaining a positive thought with your conscious mind, you're only contributing 5% of that to your life. 95% of your life is still coming from the subconscious. And if the subconscious doesn't hold those beliefs, then you're actually fighting yourself and not likely to realize the expression of a positive thought. So let's look at this again practically. So someone's not feeling well, they've got, I don't know, they've got the flu or yes. they've got something wrong with their stomach or something. What should they practically do? They should presumably go to the doctor and get a diagnosis. Would you go along with that? I'm just, I'm just trying to see I, I, where I, this yeah. goes in day-to-day -day life. Well, I wouldn't say don't go to a doctor, but I say before you go to a doctor, just look around and think about this. What's going on in your life? Where are the stresses coming from? Because it's almost uh, uh, your physiological expression is a complement to your life experiences. Those people that are happy are healthy. As I said, when you're in the honeymoon, you didn't get sick in the honeymoon. That's when you're absolutely healthy. But when you got caught back up in the real life, that's when illnesses start to occur. So we always look at, oh, I must be sick. There must be something wrong with my biology. When it turns out, it didn't begin with your biology. Only about 2% of illness is actually connected to genetics, let's say. 98% of illness is not just genetics, it's environment. So when a person says, oh, I have the breast cancer gene, and people think, oh, I'm going to get breast cancer. And I say, well, wait, wait. 50% of women that have the breast cancer gene get cancer. What about the 50% that have the gene and didn't get the cancer? And we never study that side. We only study the side that got the cancer. And you find out, well, what is it that the 50% do that don't have the cancer yet have the gene? What's different? The answer is their lifestyle is different. Their stresses, their fears, their concerns are, are not the same as the one that get the illness. It, the genes are, are like give you a propensity to get a disease, but that propensity is based on how you perceive life. 
Uh, and it's interesting, uh, studies show that when children get adopted into a cancer family, yeah. the adopted child will get the cancer with the same percentage or probability as any of the natural sibling. And you say, but yeah, but the, the child came from totally different genetic stock. And the point is, yes, it wasn't the genes that promoted the cancer, it was the lifestyle that promoted the cancer, especially the lifestyle of stress. And then I say, well, if stress is causing lifestyle, and I go look around at the world, and I go, my God, no wonder everybody's sick. Every day is filled with more stress than the day before. And if you buy into the stress, you take that disharmonious vibration, essentially, bring it in your life, and you end up with disharmony inside your body. Your life is a reflection of what you see. Yeah, it's a question of going back a few steps. That's what I'm hearing, and just, yes. and just looking to see, well, I'm not feeling well and I had the same thing last year. What's called, what's behind that? Am I happy in my life? What is emotionally happening? Absolutely. What is happening physically? Am I doing the right things to support my body? Absolutely. It's a fundamental it's very, look, yeah. isn't it? I, I don't want to say don't go to the doctor, so I, I'll go back just 20 years ago, the last time I went to a doctor. Okay. I went to a doctor because I had pneumonia. And I said to myself, well, you know, I, I can see why at that moment in my life there was so much stress going on in my life that I could see I, was, I had opened my system up to that. But then I also realized, okay, well, I can, you know, handle this with my consciousness. But then I realized the bacteria were doubling and they're growing faster than I can handle my consciousness. So I said, okay, now's the time for some penicillin. But the concept of it was, I don't rely on the penicillin and, I, and all I had to say was, look, I get back on my feet and I go, it was my responsibility. And if I don't get into that same stressful situation again, then I won't have to go through this again. El doctor Bruce Lipton, biólogo celular, concluye que tanto el campo de la espiritualidad como el de la ciencia comienzan a converger, comprobando que la materia, así como sus derivados, el dinero, posesiones, lujos o moda, son solo una ilusión pasajera que no debería afectar a nuestra real, auténtica e inmortal esencia espiritual. Something you look at in spontaneous evolution too is how science and spirituality are coming together. They used to be very separate. They used oh, to be absolutely. This, the, this, the scientific world, which is very factual driven, and that's that, and you couldn't change it. And spirituality was trying to open up things, but they really are meeting now, aren't they? Yeah, it was interesting because um, the spiritual world of religion was talking about the invisible moving forces that shape the physical reality, and we call them spirit. And then science uh, only came into existence because it, it made a detente with the church. In the very early days of science, it said, look, we won't tread on your invisible spiritual domain. We will just study the physical world. And when Newton was able to predict the movements of the planet by just looking at the physical features, then scientists got the idea as well. If you can understand how the universe operates by just studying the material world, we don't need that invisible stuff. But in 1925, Newtonian physics was uh, incorporated, subsumed by a bigger physics called quantum physics. And quantum physics emphasizes the universe is made out of energy, it's not made out of matter. And then I say, well, what does the quantum physicists call this energy that the universe is made out of? I say, well, they call it the field. I say, what's the definition of the field? I love this. Invisible moving forces that influence the physical world. I go, my goodness, that's the same definition as spiritual, it's used for spirit. I go, yes. Quantum physics emphasizing the invisible uh, field as primary to the physical world is essentially reiterating the statement of the spiritual people who talked about the invisible forces shaping our physical existence. And so by definition, science, the new science of quantum physics is bringing us back into alignment with the spiritual reality. Uh, hopefully, uh, the, the dogmatic beliefs of the church, which had uh, talked about these wonderful terms, but didn't allow us to live there, and science, which is still stuck in its material plane, will both divest themselves of their dogma and allow us to come together and recognize that we're all part of that invisible field. That, that we don't even live in our own bodies, if you understand the nature of how the cell works, that we are part of the field being downloaded into our body, that we're all, by definition, the field, or we're all spiritual, same definition. And, and if we recognize this, the unity of it, and that you cannot be taken out of the field, and you cannot be, in a sense, punished by the field, you are the field then maybe the beliefs, those very restrictive beliefs from both science and from 
the dogmatic religion uh, will disappear because the people owning their own spirituality, owning their own responsibility, and not saying, oh, it's spirits that did this or things, other factors, that we are the creators, will generate a new world because what I firmly believe is very simple. Go out and talk to the average person anywhere in the world and say, if you could create a world, what would you like? Well, I'd like a world where there's peace and harmony and I'd like some food and a job. And I go, isn't it amazing how everywhere you go in the world, virtually the entire population has the same belief. And I go, then how come we don't have any answers? Because the leadership isn't exercising that belief. So I trust the people to take over the leadership of this world and that the structure that is is actually in a state of collapse. When it collapses, this will be our opportunity to evolve from the very destructive Darwinian perception of the world into a more holistic holism that says we're all part of the same system, we're all cells in the same body, and when we work together, we will create magic on this earth like nothing has ever been seen before. So I'm very optimistic about that. I think that's a great place to finish, Bruce. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much. I so appreciate this opportunity. Dudar de lo aprendido, cuestionar de lo enseñado y no aceptar lo establecido ofrece una responsabilidad que otorga poder. El poder del libre camino hacia la evolución. No olvides suscribirte para recibir noticias sobre nuevos videos en este canal. Gracias por tu atención.